For more videos, press the subscribe button and also turn on the bell notification to receive the updates directly in your device. Hi and welcome to Nehra Classes YouTube channel. My name is Vikas Nehra and this is our first session of Ansible series. Before I start the session, let me show you the points that we are going to cover up today and in the upcoming days in this series. So we will start the session with the Ansible introduction. Then we will cover up why do we require Ansible, advantages of using Ansible, push based architecture versus pull based architecture. Then we will cover up the architecture of Ansible. Then we will discuss about the terms that we use in Ansible. Then we will discuss the working of Ansible. Then we will talk about the role of Ansible in DevOps. Then we will learn the installation of Ansible. Then we will learn the ad hoc commands that we use in Ansible. Then the Ansible modules and how to write the playbooks and Ansible configuration files writing and many more like Ansible tower, etc. So we are going to cover up first few points in this session and in the upcoming days, you will see a detailed tutorial on each topic. So without wasting time, let's get started with the Ansible introduction. Ansible is simple open source IT engine which automates application deployment, intra-service orchestration, cloud provisioning and many other IT tools. Ansible is easy to deploy because it does not use any agents or custom security infrastructure. Ansible uses playbooks to describe automation jobs and playbooks uses very simple language that is YAML. Ansible is designed for multi-tier deployment. Ansible uses the host file where one can group the hosts and control the actions on a specific group in the playbooks. Ansible is an IT automation configuration management and provisioning tool. I know guys that these might be a lot of words for you, but let me break it down so that you can understand it better. Now provisioning means to provide or supply something that is needed and Ansible here does the same thing to your application. And so we will make sure that all the necessary packages and all of the softwares are downloaded and installed in your computer in order to run your application. Okay, let's take an example to understand. Let's say uh, that you have got a debug version of an application that is built on Visual C++. Now, if I want to run that application on my system, I would need to meet some prerequisites like, for example, I would need uh, the Microsoft Visual C++ library, TLS, and I would need Visual C++ installed in my computer. So the necessary packages and all the softwares are installed in my computer so that I can run the application. But it does not mean that Ansible will only download it in just one of your computer or one of your system. And Ansible will make sure that all these packages are downloaded, installed and ready to use whenever you are intending to run your application into it. It may be in the test environment or on your production server. The configuration management means managing your software on top of your hardware. A configuration management system like Ansible also holds all historical data of your application so that at any time if you want to roll back to your previous version or you want to upgrade it you can easily do that with Ansible. Let us say I want to install same Visual C++ application on hundreds of my machines so that they will be ready when I need to use them. What I will do, I will go on the each of my machine and install it manually. It will take a huge load and time and it's bound to errors. So what can I do here? I can use a tool that can help me to configure all my systems in one go and Ansible can do that for me here. So 
The Ansible is a very powerful tool that can be used for the automation purpose for the application deployment and configuration. Ansible is easy to deploy because it does not use any agents or custom security infrastructure. Ansible uses playbooks to describe automation jobs and playbooks uses a very simple language that is called the YAML. It's a human readable data serialization language and is commonly used for configuring files but could be used in many applications where data is being stored which is very easy for human to understand to read and write hence the advantage is that even the IT infrastructure support guys can read and understand the playbook and debug if needed why AML it is in human readable form only Ansible is designed for multi-tier deployment Ansible does not manage one system at one time. It models IT infrastructure by describing all of your systems are interrelated. Ansible is completely agentless, which means Ansible works by connecting your nodes through SSH. But if you want other methods for connection like Kerberos, Ansible give that option to you as well. After connecting to your nodes, Ansible pushes small programs called Ansible module. Ansible runs that modules on your nodes and removes them when finished. Ansible manages your inventory in simple text files. These are the host files. Ansible uses host file where one can group the hosts and control the action on a specific group in the playbooks. Now the question arises, why do we need Ansible? Ansible actually automates and simplifies repetitive, complex and tedious operations. Well, before I tell you why do we use it, it is of utmost importance to understand the problems that were faced before Ansible. Let's take a little flashback to the beginning of network computing when deploying and managing servers reliably and efficiently has been a challenge. Previously, system admins manage servers by hand, installing softwares, changing configuration and administering services on individual servers. As data centers grew and hosted applications become more complex, administrators realized they could not scale their manual systems management as fast as applications they were enabling. It also hampers the velocity of the work of the developers since the development team was agile and releasing software frequently but IT operations were spending more time configuring the systems. That is why server provisioning and configuration management tools came to flourish. Consider uh, the tedious routine of the administrators a server fleet. We always need to keep updating, pushing changes, copying files on them etc. These tasks make things very complicated and time consuming. But let me tell you that there is a solution to the above stated problems and the solution is Ansible. Ansible is open source, saves time as well as human effort and it's very easy to implement. Ansible architecture is simple, effective. It works by connecting the nodes and pushing small programs to them. Ansible is pushed based architecture and does not need any agents running on the client nodes. Ansible works over SSH and doesn't require any daemons, special servers or libraries to work. A text editor and a command line tool are usually enough to get our work done. Ansible architecture is described in a file and then all the information about the desired state of these machines are organized in playbooks. Now let's come to the advantages of using Ansible. Ansible is completely agentless, there are no agent softwares or additional firewall ports that you need to install on the client systems or hosts which you want to automate. You don't have to separately set up a management infrastructure which includes managing your entire systems, network and storage. Ansible further reduces the effort required by your team to start automating right away. It's very simple. Ansible uses a simple syntax written in YAML called playbooks, 
YAML is a human readable data serialization language and does not require any coding skills. Ansible has powerful features that can enable you to model even the most complex IT workflows. In this aspect, Ansible batteries include approach. This philosophy means that something is self-sufficient, comes out of the box ready to use with everything that is needed, can manage the infrastructure network, operating systems and services that you are already using. As Ansible provides you with hundreds of models to manage them. Together Ansible capabilities allow you to orchestrate the entire application environment regardless of what where is deployed. Ansible is highly efficient. No extra software on your system means more resources for your applications. Also since Ansible modules work on JSON, Ansible is extensively with modules written in a programming language you already know. Ansible introduces modules on basic building blocks for the software. So you can even customize it as per your needs. For example, if you have an existing message sending module which sends message in plain text and you want to send images too, you can add images sending feature on the top of it. Open source. Ansible is one of the powerful DevOps tools which is open source. Secure. Ansible actually uses SSH connection to connecting to the nodes and which is in itself encrypted and secure. So that means Ansible not only reduces the human effort but also very secure since it is encrypted. Ease of use. One can configure and manage complex infrastructure solutions very easily using Ansible. And there are many more advantages as well like application deployment, security and compliance, orchestration, application deployment. When you define your application with Ansible and manage the deployment with Ansible Tower, teams are able to effectively manage the entire application lifecycle from the development to production. One more uh, like security and compliance. When you define your security policy in Ansible, scanning and remediation of site-wide security policy can be integrated into other automated processes. The next one is orchestration. Configurations alone don't define your environment. You need to define how multiple configurations interact and ensure uh, the disparate pieces can be managed as a whole. Out of complexity and chaos, Ansible brings order. Ansible provides orchestration in the sense of aligning the business requests with the application data and infrastructure. So there are many advantages of using Ansible. So guys, that's it from my side for today's session. In the next session, I will teach you the difference between the push-based architecture and the pull-based architecture. Since Ansible is based on the push-based architecture, in order to understand the working of Ansible, we must know the push-based architecture. So I hope you will find this video useful for you. If you like it, then do share it with your friends and colleagues and give a like to this video. And if you are new on this channel, then please subscribe us and turn on the bell notification. I will see you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye. Jai Hind. Vande Matram.